Hello everyone, welcome back. In our last tutorial, we learned about various control structures. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about for loop. For loop is essentially a control structure that allows you to repeat a certain set of statements again and again for fixed number of times. So in a way, for loop is allowing you to iterate fixed or known number of times. So whenever you have to execute a certain series of steps again and again, for loop is something that you should look for. For loop consists of initialization expression that initializes the loop, then termination expression that tells the condition when the loop should terminate. When this, ter when this condition evaluates itself to false, the loop terminates and then there is an increment expression increment or decrement expression that affects a value that changes after every iteration and then of course there's a statement set to repeat let's see formally what is the syntax of for loop a for loop starts with for keyword and then you have a initialization expression followed by a semicolon then a termination expression again followed by a semicolon and finally you have an increment e expression and then in the block you have statements to repeat let's see this in action if I want to print numbers from 1 to 20 then I would start with for loop I would initialize with an initialization expression which is 0 and then I will say that continue evaluating or executing this loop again and again till i becomes less than 20 and then this is the increment expression and then here I print i followed by some space. So understand that when this loop gets executed, the first thing that gets executed is initialization expression. A variable of type i gets initialized to value 0. And then the execution of loop starts. This statement system.out.print continues to execute and the first thing that gets print printed is 0. After that, what thing executes is this increment expression. This increment expression increments the value of i by 1. Now the i value becomes equal to 1. And then this test expression gets executed thinking that if this expression evaluates to true then continue execution. I repeat first of all this initialization expression gets executed i is equal to 0 and then if i is less than 20 then the iteration gets executed and then after iteration gets executed the increment expression gets executed and then again the test expression gets executed if it evaluates to true then this execution of block again happens and this continues. Let's see this in action. So you see that since i was equal to 0 and i should be less than 20, for every i that is less than 20, this statement has printed a value of i. In programming languages, generally people make mistakes by off by one errors. That means if this statement was 1 and I want to execute it this till 20 then this loop is going to execute only for 19 times although someone would make a mistake of understanding that this loop will start from, from 1 and continue till 20 if you really want to execute till 20 do not forget to put equal to sign here and this will ensure that you print all the numbers all the way from 1 to 20. This is one of the very simple and basic examples of for statement.
Now let's understand there is another version of for loop which is known as enhanced version of for loop. We will learn about collections and arrays later immediately after two or three tutorials but understand that there is a variant of for loop that works very beautifully with collection and arrays. Let me give you a sneak peek into how uh, arrays can be initialized. Arrays are nothing but a set of similar kind of elements whose size is fixed. So if I have an integer list, integer array, I'm calling it array and let me initialize it with 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And now I'm going to use the enhanced version of for loop. I will write for and then here I need to write an expression of this kind type variable colon collection what is the type of this array it is integer what is the variable value I can give anything let's let me call it item and what is the collection or the array that we are looking for its name is array and then I can simply print this item let's see its execution you will see that every element in the array leads to execution of for loop once this is enhanced version of for loop now let's quickly visit our earlier for loop once again see this carefully here we are initializing a variable i and this variable i is not visible outside this for loop because it is declared as part of for loop statement so if I write sys out print i then eclipse will show error that a variable i cannot be resolved to a variable for such scenarios where you want to use the variable outside it's better to initialize the value declare the value, value i outside and then initialize it within the loop note that now there is no error if you decide to initialize value outside you can even emit or omit the initialization expression this is also a valid for loop and you will observe that the output continues to remain the same note that this large system.out.println leads to printing of 21 why does this happen as I told you first of all I gets initialized to 1 and then this test exp expression is evaluated since i that is 1 is less than 20 this expression system.out.println gets executed and it prints 1 this loop continues for 20 times and for every time this increment expression gets evaluated now when, when for the last time when i was tw when i was 20 at that point of time since 20 was less than equal to 20 system.out.println printed i is equal to 20 as soon as that iteration finished i++ was evaluated and then the value of variable i was incremented to 21 and then this test expression was evaluated since 21 was less than equal to 20 which was false therefore no further execution happened and then the for loop terminated but this system.out.println and i printed 21 i hope this part is clear so this was enhanced version of for loop note that there is infinite version of for loop as well if you don't provide any test condition 
if you don't provide any increment condition then the for loop is going to get evaluated forever if you try out this on your sample program you will observe that that the call stack completely fills up and you will see that it turns out to be an infinite loop also note that we can also have multiple initializers or incrementers let's see this in example so if i have two variables i and j i can say that i is 0 and j is equal to 10 and we want that i should be equal to less than 5 and j should be less than equal to 5 and increment i and j plus plus in every iteration and print j so you can have multiple initializers separated by comma you can have multiple incrementers separated by co comma and then you can have a complex text expression also which might have and operator let's see the output of this so what happens here is that i was 0 j was 10 since i was 0 and j was 10 this expression test expression evaluated to false and therefore the loop did not get executed even once let me make it 0 when j is 0 then this loop should ex ex execute and see the number is now let me put space so that you are able to see what are the different outputs so the output is 0 2 4 6 8 and 10 and if you really want to see the values of i and j for every loop then we can do something like this i is i j is j so let's see this output and understand it properly initially i was 0 and j was also 0 the test expression was true and i plus j was 0 when i got incremented to 1 and j got incremented to 1 the test expression was again true and then the loop gets executed and prints true then i and j gets incremented to 2 then 3 then 4 and then 5 as soon as i and j are 5 the test expression gets in gets evaluated to true for the last time and the 10 variable is 10 the value is printed finally these both i and j gets incremented to 6 and then the test expression i is less than equal to 5 and j is less than equal to 5 gets evaluated to false so this was using multiple initializers and incrementers we can also have nested for loops what this means is that if i have a variable i and i want that the loop should get executed for exactly five times and then inside i can have another loop and i can say j is equal to 0 and then j is less than equal to i and j plus plus and sys out i want to print asterisk sign and for every outer loop i want to simply print a new line let's see the expression output in this two loops what is happening is the outer for loop gets executed for exactly five times and the inner loop gets executed for j is equal to zero to j is less than i that means the first loop will get executed for for i is equal to zero 
the first time the inner loop will get executed exactly once for i is equal to 1 it will get executed for exactly twice and therefore on the first line you will see 1 asterisk on second line 2 asterisk on third line 3 asterisk signs I would recommend you to do something use for loop and try to print something of this sort which is a pyramid this will be little interesting it will be more trickier but it will be a worthwhile experience for you so try to print something like this so you have to execute the loop you have to take care of spaces and you have to print a pyramid of asterisk signs try this out note that the increment expression can also be a method name wherever we are writing i or j plus plus you can substitute this with a method name as in this example I have used print method as the call in the increment expression and print method is a separate method so in this tutorial we have learned the syntax of for loop we saw different kind of for loop examples and we also understood the enhanced version of for loop hope you all enjoyed this tutorial stay tuned